Hello and welcome to episode 30 of the Oikos Family Podcast. My name is Sonia Wood and today I am very, very excited to share some new developments with you. So thank you for joining me. I don't know if I'm ever going to become underwhelmed <laughs> about the fact that I can actually spend this time talking to you and sharing these moments with you. I just find it to be an extraordinary privilege that I can hop into your day and just spend a few moments with you, um, sharing with you in this way through these podcasts. So what I'm excited about today is that I would like to share with you that here at Oikos, we have begun to produce audiobooks. Now, if you want to know where to find the audiobooks and how to access them and get them, the easiest and most simple thing I can say to you at this point is just go to the Oikos Family website, oikosfamily.coza, and click on store, and then it'll take you to where the audiobooks are. However, I can also tell you that audiobooks are everywhere that audiobooks are being distributed. In other words, let me just explain. Here, we are in August 2019, and this is what we're doing. We're producing an audiobook, and then we are uploading it to a website that hosts the audiobooks for us. Then that website, not being our website, I'm just not Oikos website, I mean just an audiobook website, then they distribute that audiobook everywhere that it can be distributed. So that means that if you want to listen to these audiobooks that we are creating for you, then you would go to wherever you can consume or wherever you can access audiobooks. You might already be subscribed to something or you might already have a specific preference of a place where you get audiobooks from, be it if you're using an Android device or an Apple phone or desktop or computer, whatever it might be, um, you might already be consuming audiobooks, in which case, wherever you are finding that to be the most um, straightforward or the, the place you prefer, then you will find these audiobooks that we have started producing for you. You will find them there on that particular platform. However, if this is a whole new category for you, a whole new experience, you can take the first steps by just going to the Oikos family website, in which case you will then be able to go to the audiobooks and then it'll link you to the various places that these audiobooks are available for you to get, you know, be it um, just to listen to the sample. That's what's exciting too. You can listen to a few minutes, just like a sample taste, and then decide whether you want to actually listen to the whole thing or not. Or you can get it for free because in some places they're offering it free. Other places you would need to purchase it. So I can't go into the details here. Well, I, I can, I suppose, but I would. it would become out of date fairly quickly because um, of the fact that all of these different platforms are going to be offering you the audiobook in a different kind of a way. But it is accessible um, and we hope it's just going to be very, very easy for you to be able to access these audiobooks. So let me tell you why we're doing these audiobooks, because there's a few reasons, actually a lot of reasons, but I don't think I'll go into all of them here on this podcast. Let me just give you the highlights. We want to bring these audiobooks to you because we realize that people's lives are full and we ourselves are audiobook listeners. So we love listening to audiobooks. In fact, in all the years that our children were growing up, I sat and read aloud to them every night, just about. I mean, I can say every night because it feels like it was every single night. I'm sure we missed a night here and there, but it was our habit and part of our family lifestyle and routine just to do read aloud every evening. But now our children are grown up adults, and so we don't, I don't sit and read aloud, obviously not. I haven't got children to sit and read aloud to, but what I do do is I continue to listen to audiobooks. And so... Um, one of our children, adult son, I shouldn't call him children, he's a, a man, <laughs> he is at home, and so we listen to audiobooks together. In fact, let me just share with you how we listen to these books. It can be that we're just sitting in the lounge and we listen to an audiobook, or we could be in the car going on a very short um, journey just around the corner, whatever, and then we will listen to five minutes, and in fact that could be one chapter of the book because that's how long it might take for the narrator to read that particular chapter. Or maybe we're going into town or we're going on a longer road trip, 
when I say into town, that's a 30-minute drive, but we could be going on a longer road trip and then we will listen to an audio book and we could very likely listen to an entire audio book on that trip, you know, whether we're going, if we're going on a long road trip. In fact, we might even listen to more than one audio book. So as you can hear, we enjoy listening to audiobooks, and I'm not just now producing and making audiobooks for you to listen to just because we like it, but it's more than that. It's because we gain so much. There's so much value that we get from audiobook listening, more so even than um, other ways that we can consume other people's material. You know, people who have literature, whether it's in the form of watching a series or a movie or a documentary, um, we can actually listen to documentary-style audiobooks. And we just find huge value in this for, for many reasons, which if you're already an audiobook listener, I won't need to ex go into the detail of that. But if you're not, then I'm going to suggest that you, you start being an audiobook listener because whether you're doing it for yourself when you're just, you know, just sitting in a car park waiting for something, maybe the children are at an extra mural and are waiting for them to come out and you are sitting there for three minutes or 13 minutes or however long it might be, um, you might listen to an audiobook in that time and it might just be that that audiobook will be very supportive to you. Um, the reason why I say this is as well is because I, when I'm on my own, will listen to audiobooks um, sometimes and I will be very selective of what audiobook I listen to and I found that that time that I have when, when I'm alone to be able to just listen to somebody's testimony or somebody sharing their story, I find it hugely helpful on, on so many levels. So um, I would say that is enough reason right there. As I said, there's a long list of reasons why we've chosen to start um, doing audiobook creation for you. But it's mostly because we want to help you and support you and we hope that you will be able to gain value from these audiobooks that we're creating. So I suppose you've already guessed that we will be very selective what audiobooks we produce because it is an incredibly time-consuming process. It literally takes months to produce one audiobook. So because we know the time commitment in it, we are being very selective of what we're choosing to narrate for you. Um, an example being our narrated a couple of months ago, or a month ago, whenever it was, um, the audiobook Learning Lifestyle Diary. And that was a book that I wrote a very long time ago, um, which takes us through the day-to-day -day learning lifestyle of a home educating family. And I just shared in that book, um, daily sharing like a diary, uh, testimony of our experience in the learning lifestyle. And now I've narrated that book. And so now it's available for moms or for anybody, for that matter, who perhaps would like to listen to it. An example being as well that you might not have time because you've got a full schedule and you've got your day packed with so much going on, but you may be able to listen to a chapter or two of an audiobook when you're cooking the dinner or when you're having a bath. Maybe you're taking a break and you can take your iPhone into the bathroom and you can listen to an audiobook while you're having a soak. Or maybe you can even just listen to some of an audiobook when you just need time to sit and have a cup of tea and just listen to a chapter. So this is another reason why we are doing the audiobooks is because we just want to share those moments with you. We want to, with the moments that you do have here and there, we hope to be able to bring something into that moment for you and that we hope you will find it helpful. And then there is another reason why I'm so excited today about this audiobook topic, because I'm going to share in this podcast a little excerpt from Missy's short stories, because Missy, our daughter, started writing when she was about eight or maybe younger, and we collected the stories she wrote, and eventually we compiled them into a book, and it's called Missy's Short Stories. This book is available, you know, for people to get as in a paperback book or as an e-book. And now our son has narrated it. And so that means that you can listen to this book being read to you. And what's nice about Missy short stories is there's many, many little short stories that she wrote at all different ages from 8 to 18 or maybe even 19. 
And she wrote these stories um, that were pertaining to things that were happening at that season in her life. For example, the short excerpt I'm going to share with you now is a story called The Empty Tomb that James, her brother, has read. And it is in this audiobook. It's only a few minutes. And it's a story about um, some young men that were going to to rob the tomb, and uh, uh, Pharaoh's tomb. Now, the thing is, Missy wrote the story when she was busy learning the history of that time. And so she wrote a short story about it. So now we've got this short story. And then she would write a little poem um, for whatever reason, you know, it might have been that she enjoyed her bubble bath. There's one poem in the book called My Bubble Bath. And so she wrote a little poem about it. Because you see, during our learning lifestyle, we spend time capturing the moments and making memories, like I have shared in the previous podcast, 28 and 29, I think I spoke about capturing moments. And so this little book, Missy's short story, not so little, there's a lot of short stories in there. In fact, I don't even know how many. Let me have a look. I'll tell you in a moment. Okay, so I had a look at my computer and there are 51 audio clips now. That is including all the little poems interspersed between the short stories. Okay, so let me share with you now, um, before going on any further about this excitement that I have about these audiobooks, I'm going to share with you uh, The Empty Tomb, um, followed by My Signet, which is a little poem about a little birdie. Um, a little swan, baby swan. And in actual fact, um, the reason why we have that one to share with you is we were studying birds at the time, as you see. So after we had been learning about some birds, I encouraged Missy to write a little poem. And in actual fact, she was just a natural writer, so it would, not a lot of encouragement was required. However, on the other hand, if I wanted to get a little story out of our son, that would be a different different matter altogether because he would be more resistant to that. But now look, he's actually reading, narrating the stories that his sister wrote, the stories and poems. And now you can listen to these stories and poems. And I'm just, I think it's wonderful. I think it's so, so exciting that this is a fruit that I get to enjoy. So I am blessed and I know you are too. In fact, my mother reminds me, count your blessings every day. So if you haven't counted your blessings today, let me remind you, count your blessings. You're going to find there are many of them. Okay, so here we have the empty tomb, followed by my signet. The hot wind blew through the darkness into the pyramid. A shiver ran up Torin's spine as he thought of what he was about to do. Torin was waiting just inside the entrance of the pyramid for his friends to arrive. He had been waiting for some time and was about to get impatient. This was supposed to be a very important night for Torin and his friends. They were going to rob the tomb of the first pharaoh of Egypt, Pharaoh Menes. Torin shifted his position on the hard rock and strained his ears for any sound of approaching walkers. Just as he was about to crawl to the entrance and look out, he heard the sound of running feet. Torin stiffened and moved closer to the wall. His heart was beating fast, and he was sure that the running feet belonged to an Egyptian guard. Rawes looked for Torin. Coming into the moonlight just long enough for Rawis to see him, he asked, Why were you running? I said to come slowly and carefully. I had to run, for I was late and I never would have arrived in time if I was to walk the whole way, finished Rawis crossly. Oh, well, you are here at least. I thought that you would never arrive, whispered Torin. By the way, did you see Elek? Yes, I saw him on the road. He should be here any minute. Just as Rawes finished speaking, Elek walked in. At last you are here. Let's get going. The burial chamber is up those stairs. As Torin said this, he pointed at a long, narrow staircase. The boys headed up the very long and very steep stairs. They reached the top and almost fell into a deep hole, built especially to stop tomb robbers from going into the next passage, which led to the burial chambers. Fortunately for them, they stopped just in time, and had a plank to walk across. Hurry up! We only have an hour to get in there, steal the gold, and get out of here. Torin said this in an irritated voice as they hurried through the passage. They reached the end, and there stood a massive rock. Oh no! exclaimed Elek. Don't worry, I have a solution for this. 
This was said by Torin as he pulled out his pieces of wood and placed them under the rock, lit them, and settled down to wait. After settling himself, he looked up at his friend's astonished faces. You heat the rock, splash cold water on it, and it will crack, he explained. Now knowing what was going on, his friend settled down to wait for the rock to heat up. The stone cracked, just as they had planned, and they were able to enter the tomb. As they entered, they were shocked to see that they were not the first to visit the tomb. Someone else had been there and had emptied out the whole tomb. What now? asked Rowes. Well, that's it, I suppose. There is no treasure here, that's for sure. Let's just go home, exclaimed Torin. The three robbers turned and left the tomb. They walked down the stairs and out of the pyramid in complete silence. When they were out in the night air again, Torin broke the silence by saying, I am glad we didn't find any treasure, to be honest, for if we had, we would have been robbers, and I don't really want to be one. I was just caught up in the thought of having so much money. Aren't you glad to still be innocent? They all agreed that they were, and headed back to their homes with free and happy hearts. The End Written in 2002, age 13 My Signet Little bird, little swan, inside your egg, little one, I hear a sound, click, click, clicking, cracking all around. I see a beak, I see a head, little eyes, oh so sweet, legs and tiny feet. My little swan, do come along. Written in 2000, age 11. Well, I hope that you enjoyed listening to that, and I hope even more that you'll enjoy listening to a lot of the other stories. The stories vary from five minutes to 45 minutes, so they're not, some of them are much, much shorter than the others, obviously, and, and they all have some sort of moral in them that you can use to help teach your children, or maybe you're going to listen to one of these stories and decide, now that is a story you need one of your children to specifically listen to, for whatever reason. That's what's nice about these audiobooks, you can see at what point that story started and finished, and you can just share it um, with one of your children or whoever it is that you feel that story might be pertinent for or to. Okay, so this has been a longer than usual podcast because I wanted to share with you those excerpts from Missy's short stories narrated by her brother. Um, actually, before I go, the other thing I wanted to tell you was although every story's got a moral, it won't necessarily say to you the empty tomb, a story about thieves, for example. It won't, it won't tell you about what is the moral in that story. That's for you to pick up and build upon the story or use that story for your own personal circumstances to be of support to you, we hope. Okay, so if you need help with being able to access these audiobooks in any way that you might be having a struggle with it, you can always just email us, help at oikosfamily.coza, or you can go on the website and go to the chat to us um, button there, and there'll be somebody there that can support you. But you know, this podcast isn't actually about sending you here, there, and everywhere. It's more about encouraging you and supporting you in your lifestyle. And that is why I hope these audiobooks really do that. I really do hope they're going to support you and that you're going to have time in between just to consume and enjoy and listen to these audiobooks that we're doing for you. Thank you for listening. As I said at the beginning, I don't think I will ever get over feeling the sense of being totally overwhelmed by the privilege of being able to just be with you in this moment at this time. So thank you for your time and thank you for listening. And I'm looking forward to sharing podcast episode 31 with you. Bye for now.